been one year with the Echo Core, and it's time that I share my honest opinion. I'm Dr. Adam Goodcough. If you're new to the channel, welcome back and thank you for watching. Full disclosure on this video, you've seen the ads, I work with Echo, I thoroughly believe in this device. And so if that skews you and you don't want to hear a review, I want to be full disclosure, don't watch then. But otherwise, this is going to be my one year with the Echo. I'm going to share a little bit about how I got involved with Echo, how the device has been for me clinically while working, and then also some of the really cool tech at the end that they've added in. We're talking AI, murmur recognition, it's been really impressive. So comment down below before we get started, would you upgrade to a digital stethoscope or do you want to stay with an analog and you're not interested in the technology? I'm just curious what people's thoughts are, but either way, we're going to get into it. I hear you, you say that you don't need a digital stethoscope and you're not wrong, you don't need a digital stethoscope. In fact, doctors have been using analog stethoscopes for years, however, you also don't need shoes to walk. People walked for years without shoes, but it makes it more comfortable. So that's a little bit of a dramatic example, but I would say it's the same of the Echo. If you asked me before I had the core if I would have used a digital stethoscope, I would have said no, I don't need that, I don't really care. And to be honest, this is a little bit of how I met Echo, and so they had reached out on Instagram and basically said, we just want to send you a stethoscope, try it out and see if you like it. I said, sure, that's fine, I'll check out the device. I like to review medical devices and it's actually something I wanna do more on this channel is review more medical tech because I think it's a really exciting time right now for medical technology and services. But that's another topic. So I got the stethoscope and I started using it in the department. And to be honest, as soon as I turned it on, it's this like mind blowing experience. You've probably seen this ad playing thousands of times and it's because it's such a good organic ad. It's something that we made out of a genuine reaction. So one of my co-residents had not used the Echo device. We obviously staged walking towards each other but then I gave him the device and let him turn it on. And the feeling that everybody gets when you put this in, it's up to 40 times I think they say noise cancellation in this device. I don't know how to quantify 40X but it is significantly more amplified. You can turn it up if you have kind of bad hearing or it's a loud environment. And the nice thing, if you've ever used AirPod Pros, this cancels out sound similar to AirPod Pros. Now, it's not active sound canceling, but it just seems to isolate you in with the tips and then whatever is going on here, it quiets down the environment around you. Now, that brings up a couple issues. The first issue that I see time and time again in all of the comments is, well, how do you grade murmurs if they're all so loud? I have to let you in on a little secret. I don't grade murmurs. I'm not a cardiologist. I'm not here to grade murmurs. I will comment on a physical exam if there is a murmur and if I think it's clinically significant, I can always talk with cardiology. So maybe this isn't the stethoscope for a cardiologist. I can't speak to that. I'm not a cardiologist. However, I don't grade murmurs, so I don't really care that much if it's distorting the volume of a murmur. What it does really nice for someone who's in emergency medicine or I could imagine someone in EMS is it allows me to hear lung sounds very easily in a loud, busy trauma bay where it can be difficult. Now, yes, there are other tools we can throw an ultrasound on, we can obviously get a chest x-ray, but when you're doing that initial primary survey and you take a listen to lungs, when you can noise cancel out and be very confident on what you're hearing, that to me was a huge win and it's honestly like, for me as an ER training physician, the biggest selling point of having this device is like the loud, loud environment that we're in all the time, having confidence in what I'm actually hearing. Now, I would be curious if there's any cardiologists that watch these videos, comment down below if you would use one of these devices and if it would alter your ability to hear murmurs. I do find that I can pick up murmurs more easily with this device. They're obviously louder, they're easier to catch. And it's nice because I can have that conversation with a patient saying, hey, did you know that you have a murmur? Overall, I like the sound amplification 40X. I don't know what that means 40 times. I don't know, 40 times, 20 times, 100 times, but it is significantly louder than a regular stethoscope. It is more clear and crisp, and we're gonna get into some of the connectivity next. Okay, so anytime you have a digital device or something that has battery power, your first question might be, well, I'm gonna forget to charge the battery, so this is useless, I don't want to have to worry about this. And I grabbed, actually, this is my work, I just pulled it out of my bag. This is my work stethoscope, see it's a different color. I don't wanna have to worry about charging the battery. I have now owned this, Echo, I think for about a year, and I've charged it four times, three times, three or four times in a year. So you can figure each charge, if you turn it on, listen to sounds, turn it off, it's gonna last about two to three months. I, that's not an official claim from them, that's my experience. 
that's how I've had it. I, I haven't charged it more than three times, maybe four times at most. I don't know how they fit that much battery life. I think it's just because I turn it on quickly. I do an exam. It's a minute. I turn it back off. It's not on for a long time, but the battery life is incredible on this thing. And the other thing you might worry about is durability. You can see I have my stethoscope mount on it and you know, you can see some of these scratches in the up close video here. It's a little bit scratched up. The bell actually from Lippmann has taken more damage than the device itself. I wipe this with cavi wipes. The port is exposed, but it doesn't seem to be a problem. I mean, I don't like pour liquid in there, but it hasn't been a problem yet. It works great. So overall, I'd say the durability is, is pretty impressive. It hasn't broken. I toss it around in my bag every single day. It's bumping into things in rooms. It drops on the floor, unfortunately. That's where the cavi wipes come in. So it's been an incredibly durable device. I haven't had any problems with the actual core piece or the stethoscope, and it's survived over a year in the emergency department. So what about the actual connectivity? That's what we're all waiting for, right? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I don't use the connectivity a lot when I'm working in the emergency department. It just doesn't fit my practice. It's a very cool feature and the ability to actually, you know, download sounds, share them, analyze them, send them to an attending or send them to a colleague. It's super valuable. It's just, again, in the emergency department, in my scope of practice, it's not something that I do very often. But if I had an interesting case, you know, we filled out the appropriate forms at the university, I could, you know, keep that sound for a case report if I had a, a really bizarre heart sound or a strange lung sound or something like that. So it is nice to know. It's super easy. You fire up the app, you just connect the device, it's Bluetooth, and then you're connected. One of the really cool things about the Bluetooth is you can use your AirPods to listen as a stethoscope. What about the future of connectivity? Well, Echo is actually on the cutting edge of this. It's super impressive. They have recently released AI into the software that they use. There's a preset pattern and it walks you through doing a cardiac exam through most of the auscultation points that you need and it will then analyze if there are any murmurs. Now they have another device called the Duo which is somewhat similar to like how an Apple Watch will tell you if you're an AFib so it will kind of do a brief one lead EKG. Um, that's a different thing and we can review that if you want in another video. I actually have one sitting over here. But either way, the fact that they're bringing AI into medicine just to help and make sure you're identifying murmurs and also it's great for learners. I, I think it's a very exciting thing. Again, it's not something that I'm using in my practice, but I think it is a cool piece of technology. What about price? How much do these things cost? Well, at the time of filming this video, it's $329 for a stethoscope like this, the Echo Core that comes with the whole device or you can pay 200 and I think it's $209 for just the core device to insert into your old stethoscope. That's not nothing. So the question becomes, is it worth the money? Well, the Lipman Cardiology 4, which is the base stethoscope of this piece, costs just over $200 itself. And the device here, if you buy it separately, costs just over $200. So together it's over $400 if you were to try and build it yourself. From Echo, it's 300 and, what did I say, $29 or something like that for the whole thing. But that doesn't really help you. Is this worth $329 to have sound amplification? I wish that I could give you an answer personally. I think you have to evaluate these things. One, are you going to use the technology in the device? Do you find the AI helpful? Are you an instructor who's going to be teaching by sounds that you've recorded or by letting learners listen via AirPods or recordings? You can just play back the recording on your phone. And then also, do you work in a loud environment where you're gonna benefit from noise canceling or sound amplification? Is that going to help you either, is it gonna help you identify murmurs? Is it gonna help you identify different lung sounds or the presence of lung sounds? You know, what is the value to you on that? For me, this is something that I use every single day that I work. And since I have the pleasure of being a resident and working 18 days a month, this gets a lot of use. If you factor in vacation, I work 11 months out of the year. And then if you take the price of the Echo, which is 329 and divide it by 11, you'll see that it comes out to about 30. So that's like paying $30 a month to use the Echo. I can think of a lot of subscription services that are $30 a month, a lot of other things that you buy that cost more than that. I mean, I work 18 days a month, so if you round it up to like $30 every month, and then you divide it out every shift, I'm paying $1.60 to use the Echo. I don't know if we're just getting lost in the numbers. The point is, it's not particularly expensive. It's not much more than having Netflix. So is it worth it for you? That's a personal question. For me, I would buy one of these. I think especially given that the price difference, it's only like $110 more or $120 more than a regular Cardiology 4. To me, that's worth the price difference. I don't know though, what is it to you? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this tech review or found it helpful, let me know and we will try and do some more. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.